May it please the court. Mr. Pratt. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. On February 18th of 2014, the defendant purposely killed Haley Owens by shooting her in the back of the head. And he did so after deliberation because he had to get rid of her because he had sexually abused her and she was a witness to that kidnapping and to that sexual assault. And you remember her timeline. At 2.01, she was homesick. You recall that's the sports bra that she was wearing. The sports bra later found disposed of by the dumpster, by the defendant in the dumpster at the Cosmic Fish. She was feeling a little better later in the afternoon, so she headed to her friend's house, leaving sometime around 3.32. And she took her time getting there. She got there about 4.12, goofing around at her friend's house, and then left her friend's house. Sometime probably around 4.28, if you look at that series of photographs from her cell phone. And she took her time going home. Eerily, as she walked down Lombard Street, she took a photo of Jeremiah Paddock's house, where the defendant would later throw her cell phone. 4.35, she stopped to climb a tree. There are no trees like that right in the front of Mr. Paddock's house, so probably somewhere a little further down the road. And those are the clothes, the shorts, and the shirt the defendant disposes of in the dumpster. And during this time period that she's taking her time walking home, playing with her phone, climbing trees, what's the defendant doing? He's driving around that neighborhood, and he spots her. And she becomes his target and his prey. Just 12 minutes later, right? In front of the Edwards house. 14 at 16 hours, 47 minutes, and 27 seconds. And you're familiar with the rest of that 911 call made by Ms. Edwards. What's happened? What's different on that street at that time? Carlos Edwards has been outside, right, raking his leaves. But he's gone inside his garage to be with his wife while she's on the phone when the defendant pulls up where Haley was near that orange cone, calls her over to his truck, opens the door, and throws her into the passenger seat driving off. Fortunately, Ms. Edwards got that license plate number. So instruction number five tells you the elements of murder in the first degree. First, that on or about February 18th, 2014, in the county of Green, state of Missouri, the defendant caused the death of Haley Owens by shooting her. That's really undisputed, right? His truck is seen. She gets the license plate. She calls it in. Eventually, we learn what that is. The police get there, you know it's in Springfield and Green County. You saw the maps, you heard everyone testify to that. She's found in his basement, bag, packed in the tub, ready to be disposed of after being shot in the back of the head. That element is really undisputed and uncontroversial. Second, it was the defendant's purpose to cause the death of Haley Owens. Well, I submit to you that when you place the muzzle, the end of the barrel of a gun, against the back of the base of the skull and you pull the trigger, there's only one purpose you can have, and that's to kill someone. And your common sense tells you that. And Dr. Stacy talked about the injury that she had, and you saw that injury. For her neck, the contact wound, where it had the abrasion, where the barrel touched it, and the stippling from the gunpowder, where it was loosely contacted with it. So third, that the defendant did so after deliberation, which means cool reflection upon the matter for any length of time, no matter how brief. So let's look at all the evidence. So what was going on at the beginning of the day for the defendant? It's very deliberate before the murder. 706. 
goes to the ADM on the way to work, gets some cash. That morning, he sees his friend, Gary Turner, in the gym. What's Gary Turner tell us? It's regular Craig. Works the whole day. End of the day, he brings the student back to the office. The kids leave. They go off on the bus. He has his usual debriefing with the assistant principal, Tracy Williams. Typical Craig. Nothing unusual. What about after the rape, sodomy, and murder? What's he do? He strips the bed. Why? We've got to get rid of the evidence. He deliberately washes the murder scene and Haley. You heard the testimony about the basement floor, the smell of the bleach. You know that she was also washed. You saw the glistening of her skin in those autopsy reports um, and photographs. And you saw some of the liquid that smelled of bleach that ends up being mixed with her blood left in the bottom of the tub. Because he had to get rid of not only Haley, the witness, but also the evidence. He deliberately hides Haley's body until he can get rid of it, right? You package it in this tub, that tub right there, if you have a little more time, right, you can probably get rid of it. Maybe you drive it off to Ash Grove or somewhere else in the woods and you get rid of her because no one's going to suspect it, especially if you duct tape around the top so no one can smell anything. And look at all this stuff. Remember the floor is covered in water and bleach, right? takes the time to protect this stuff. I submit to you the, log the common sense logical reference. All this stuff up here <coughs> was in that tub before he put Haley in that tub. But he stacks it up there to protect it for himself. He deliberately unloads and hides the rifle. Where was the rifle? Remember all those guns he had around of a higher caliber? In fact, when he's raping her in the bedroom, He's got a handgun right there he could have used. Does he use that? No, he doesn't. He chooses the smallest caliber weapon he has that'll make the least mess and the least noise. And then he hides it in the gun safe, doesn't leave it out like the other guns. And he unloads that magazine, but he made a small mistake because he's unloading the magazine. This bullet fell at the bottom of the safe. Copper coated bullet got the shell casing from the one he fired. Rodney Jickets tells you that those eject to the right and back. Where's it found in the basement? Over in the corner by the shop back. Is it going to bounce around a little on the concrete? Sure, absolutely. But where is it? Back into the right by the shop back. He didn't have a disguise, but he did try to make sure no one would recognize him and spot him, right? He changed clothes that we know of at least twice after school, right? And even choosing a law enforcement academy cap of his brother, because, you know, who's going to suspect that? And you also recall about the hat when you look at it in person, because this is the second time he goes to Walmart. What's that hat got all over it? Those speckles of the bleach from when he's down there cleaning with the hose and the bleach, and he's getting the blowback from that. Had a little problem though, right? Something went wrong with the drain, so he had to go to Walmart because he needed some liquid plumber. You recall the receipt. He buys two bottles of bleach, great value bleach, and a bottle of liquid plumber. Maybe when he got back the drain and cleared, he didn't have to use it, but he purposely knew he needed that, right? Went to Walmart. You saw him walking through the Walmart. You saw how calm he was when he was doing that. No trouble with the machines chooses a self-checkout aisle, right? Least amount of contact with people possible. And that shirt, right? The Gator Driver shirt, what's he do with that? One of his trips to the laundromat, it gets shoved in with the other laundry. So it's hidden and washed. And that, remember, this, remember, he pulls into the parking lot at 536, 49 minutes after he took Haley, he's already getting the bleach and the liquid plumber to help him in the cleanup. Then at 708, <coughs> you saw him, you can watch the video, you know those are the same clothes he's arrested in after he goes to Walmart the second time. And what's he doing? He's, and he chooses this secluded location, right? Because you have to, you see this all in this point, you can park behind this building, 
He walks all the way to the middle where the dumpster is. And then what's he doing? He keeps going, right, to scope it out, make sure it's the best place. Then he comes back because he's got something in his hand here when he goes to scope it out. When he comes back, he's still got that hand. You see the lid of the dumpster go up. And what goes in? Haley's clothes. We well, underestimated the Springfield Police Department, and they found those during the grid search, which helped us tie him to the crime. Now, unfortunately, he had other time to get rid of stuff, right? And he did successfully get rid of her panties that might have had evidence, as well as her flip-flops and those ligatures he used to bind her. So then he's got all that laundry, right? It's not going to fit in that basket you saw on top of the tub. So he's got to go get a laundry bag and what else? Some duct tape. It'd be really handy to help seal the container for when you move it or to wrap something else in you're getting rid of. Let's talk about the crime itself. If you look at the totality of the crime, you also know this was a very deliberate act. 4.32, Haley's in front of Mr. Paddock's house. And he's walk, she's walking west. That's why it's right to left instead of left to right. Right, she's walking west. And she gets in front of the Edwards house. Carlos is no longer outside, right? He's in the garage. And unfortunately, we don't have a picture for that day, right? Because what's parked right here, right, is there a white Cadillac CTS, which is going to obscure the defendant's view a little bit. They're going to have a much better view of him than he them. The Edwards. Also, he's pulled past their house, right? And where's his focus? Is he looking in their garage? No. He's seen Haley on the street. She's distracted, right? Ms. Edwards told you about how she's playing with her phone. He spins around, comes right up to her, snatches her, and gone. And he's got a clear mind. He's thinking when he does this, right? Nine houses down the road, less than a full block. Was it? That phone doesn't fall out of the car, right? It's not like on the ground in the street. It's thrown all the way up in the yard. You'll recall there's close-up pictures of this exhibit eight. It's way up here in the yard. He chucked that phone so that she couldn't be found and rescued to give him the time to do what he wanted to do with her. He then deliberately rapes and sodomizes her in his home. Again, he gets rid of the bed sheets. Dr. Stacy told you about her vaginal injuries, that those were consistent with penetration by an erect penis, that her anal injuries were also consistent with that. And remember those abrasions? And you can look at those photos of the abrasions on her hips. Right here on our hips, where your hip bone is, where it would rub against something like the cording on that mattress or something else you were bent over as you were sexually assaulted. And you know his intent was to have vaginal and anal sex because he wrote about it. He wrote about that that's what he wanted to do to a little girl. What else did he write about when he's talking about those stories when he's actually having either anal sex or vaginal sex? What does he do? He pulls out when he ejaculates. That's what he tells us he does. That's his intent. And what's he do with Haley's body after he unclothes her afterwards? He washes it. And how do we know he doesn't take her shirt off and her bra off till afterwards? Well, they got the blood from the gunshot wound. Remember? What well, doesn't have the blood? The shorts. He literally fights with Haley. It's likely Haley fought back some. You saw his lip. Scratch on his hip, scratch on his neck. You saw the injuries to her left hand and thumb. You saw the injury to her cheek. Now remember, Dr. Stacy said the one in the forehead is probably from the gunshot wound, but not that bruise on her cheek. And talking about the Gunshot wound again. Remember also there's these injuries down here on her neck where she's got blunt force trauma to the back of her neck. Look at those cell phone photos. She takes some really good selfies of her face. She didn't have those injuries. She's got a little tiny, like a callus almost or something from climbing that tree here on her hand. 
and a little red mark on her belly, but not those abrasions on her hip bones, and not that place where the ligature on her one arm had something Five under it. Five minutes. Something under it that caused that laceration, that abrasion under her wrist. The delivery binds her. Mr. Vandenberg told you about how the redness and that indention in the skin showed that it was done while she was still alive. Dr. Stacy told you about how in the left arm it was wrapped with a great deal of pressure. And on the right arm, you recall ligature up the wrist, how it moved down the hand, how Dr. Stacy told you but that ligature moving, seeing that in these pictures indicated him that Haley was struggling to get free. Struggling to get free while she's led to a basement to be executed. What about the basement? That's a very deliberate choice, isn't it? It's concrete, unfinished. Your common sense tells you, what's that gonna do? It's gonna dampen the noise, especially when you use that lower caliber weapon, right, with a contact shot. To the back of the head. Pretty convenient. You got a hose down there and a drain to clean up. Quite a bit of thought in the place you choose to kill someone. And also, pretty good temporary hiding place to store the tub with the body so you can get rid of it. Again, he deliberately picked the smallest cover weapon. He had tons of choices. They weren't like hard choices. He didn't have to like go to the safe, unlock the safe get a gun, right? He had guns everywhere. He had the one in his bedroom, he had the shotgun by the door, the pistol on the nightstand within reach of the bed. He's got several handguns, two handguns in the bookshelf, two in a case, the Ruger 44 uh, special on the table, the two shotguns beside the safe, another pistol, another revolver in the storage room. That gun was chosen very purposely. Less mess and less noise. And he deliberately executed. <clears throat> the defendant's a big man. He's taller than me. You heard he's over six foot. Haley's four foot eleven. Remember the bullet wound goes from the back of the neck through the base of the skull, through the brain stem, splitting into parts off the brain, likely ricocheted off the front of her skull, shooting up, right? Up. So Haley's got to be where? She's got to be down and bound Goodness. to make that shot placing the barrel against her skin as he pulls the trigger, executing her. Then he packages her for disposal and treats her like trash, just like he did her clothes. Ladies and gentlemen, I ask you to consider all of the evidence and return a verdict finding the defendant guilty of murder in the first degree. Thank you. May I please the court? Mr. Patterson. I remind you, ladies and gentlemen, the court instructed you that statements of counsel aren't evidence. So I'd ask you to look at the actual evidence. There's no evidence of compulsion in this case. There's evidence of a desire to have sex with little girls but not a compulsion to kill someone. And what about those stories, those fantasies? How do those end? The one, the drugged girl, she wakes up, she doesn't know, know anything really happened, got away with it. Second time, she enjoys it, right? She likes it, she quietly goes to sleep beside the defendant or with the defendant. That's not what happened in this case. Haley struggled. Haley fought. Haley didn't want to have sex with the defendant. Yeah, he knew the jig, remember in the opening statement, he knew the jig was up, right? But as he drives that 12 minutes from where he took her, hey, no one's falling, right? No one's on his tail right then. 
he probably knows he's got limited time to do what he wants to do. So he gets to the house and he does it. And he does it quick, right? Because there's only like 33 minutes there if you do all the math on the driving time and when the abduction was and when he's at Walmart. But she didn't just go to sleep or wake up and not know anything happened. So she's got to be disposed of like trash. Evil can't always be explained. Use your common sense. You've heard it a ton of times. People get convicted and their friends come and say, oh, he was the nicest guy. I never saw it coming. That just happens in our world. We can't always explain the other side of people. Kept talking about plan. Read the definition of deliberation. I don't think you'll find the word plan. What happened was this didn't go as he wanted. So then he had to make some decisions. And he did. And he made the decision to get rid of Haley Owens by killing her. And before he did it, he bound her hands so he could control her. And then he placed the muzzle of that rifle to the back of her head and killed her. Why? To get rid of her as a witness. I submit to you that is deliberation. And I ask that you find him guilty beyond a reasonable doubt of murder in the first degree. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.